Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. The prompt was patina. So I'm gonna show you how to create the patina effect really, really easily. Maximum effect, minimum effort. But before we get started, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and then click on the bell so you'll be notified of all upcoming videos. Let's get started. So as I said, the prompt was patina. This is a prompt from week seven of the index card a day challenge. I'm working on my card bases. They're approximately the size of an index card and it's what I had, so that's what I'm using. I'm just slipping it inside this protective envelope that I just created out of copy paper. Now, the first step here is tissue paper. Nothing special, dollar store, leftover from gift bags, it doesn't need to be a full sheet, could be remnants of it. What you're going to do is take that and crinkle it up and then glue it down. Now, my preferred adhesive is Fluid Matte Medium from Liquitex. But today I'm using up some Mod Podge. It's also matte finish and I'm gluing it down. So if you've got some Mod Podge and you want to get rid of it, this is a good place to use it when you're layering the tissue paper down. Now I am bunching this up. I want to get as much and as many wrinkles and texture as I can. This is going to give texture to our background. It is also going to give pattern. One easy step, really how easy can it be? We're just simply gluing it down. I'm putting several layers, one on top of another. The only thing that you need to be mindful of here is the more layers that you have, you're putting glue and wet and it's going to take a bit longer to dry. But that is the only problem and I'm just layering it up then once that's completely dry, I'm gonna cut off the excess and get started. Now we're going to put color. Now I am using this copper color because I wanna create that patina effect that comes when copper gets weathered. And I'm just applying this with a makeup sponge. Now the Mod Podge is kind of It's made, made the surface a little less or a little more resistant to the paint. So I'm putting it on and I'm putting it on thicker and I'm applying several coats to get the color and depth that I want. And as you can see, all that texture and pattern from just gluing down tissue paper is coming to life. And with that shimmer from the copper, OMG yum. Look at that. So I'm going to make sure this dries. Keep adding color till you get the depth that you want. So once everything's dry, now we're going to make the patina effect and we want that greenish color. So I'm using Liquitex Basics. I believe it's Bright Aqua. Putting it on a makeup sponge, you could put it on a blending foam as well, and I'm just rubbing it over top of the high spots. This is giving you that patina effect. You get somewhere you don't want it, you can wipe it off with a baby wipe if everything is completely dry underneath, and I'm just rubbing it. You can rub it with your fingers if you prefer. You'll find what works best for you. I want some areas brighter, so I'm gonna come back when it's dry and build up that aqua patina color. And OMG, isn't this gorgeous? And how easy. If you take out the drying time, time-wise, this is also super quick and easy. So here I'm just adding a little bit to brighten it, have a little bit more bright aqua there. And here we go, look at this. Could anything be more scrumptious? Now I came back and I put some Prussian blue on there. I wanted to darken it. Now if I was doing this again, I would have put the Prussian blue first and then the bright aqua, 
because I don't want the Prussian blue to be forward. And I do tweak it. I add a little bit of the bright aqua on there. But it just gives that two-tone blue and adds some depth and interest. But you could skip the Prussian blue if you wish. Now I'm moving along to the focal point. And I, amongst my Stamperia ephemera, ephemera, I think this was from the Cosmos one or Cosmos Infinity one. But I want to add a little bit more to my background. So I grab this Link Tiles stencil, some black acrylic paint, and I'm putting that in three places, just stenciling through. And again, I'm using the makeup sponge to do that. Lost this footage, I apologize. But I do put it in three places. Now I'm going to figure out where exactly and how I want the owl to sit. It goes this way and it goes the other way. I like both of them. But this is where you play with it and see what works best. I also dug out the sentiments to see what sentiment I wanted and which way it fits better. So take this time to turn it around, play with it, see how it goes. Now I grab the sentiment from my It's About Time sentiment pack and all my sentiment packs, they are digital downloads. You can purchase them at ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link in the description code. So if you're looking for sentiments, please check them out. I like putting the, the sentiment here, kind of as it's the base, so the owl looks like it's sitting on it. And I didn't want to cover up any more of that patina effect. I loved it. I worked for it. I don't want to cover it up with my sentiment. So I grab some gel medium and I am going to glue down my owl, my focal point and my sentiment. Now at this point you might say, but Karen, I don't the owl doesn't really stand out, but you know we're going to do some shading, some highlighting, some tweaking of color to make the focal point stand out. That's in the finishing stages and you can make it stand out. I like it because it's got the black and those kind of a little bit of gold in it and a little bit of that orange in it. So it goes well with the background but I do want it to stand out more. I'm making sure my focal point has a good coat of the gel medium on top so that it turns into a non-porous surface. So if I choose to highlight, shade, tweak the colors, I'm working on a non-porous surface and I find it works just better. So there we have it. It's all nice and dry and I, I'm starting the shading point. Now I'm shading on top of the focal point here. I will come back and I will shade outside of the focal point afterwards. And typically I do both and I find that's the effect that I like the most. So here I'm going on the paper and I'm hoping that you can see what a difference that it makes. This technique is called floating acrylic. It was a technique that I learned when I did folk art painting, but it works so well for shading and highlighting. And I will link the video where I teach that technique if you want to learn it. Now I'm just adding some color to the owl, just beefing up the color that's there. Now I could have used any color medium. I grabbed my Distress Crayons. You just write, scribble it on. I could have used my ink tense blocks. You could even use watered down acrylic paint. So use what you have and tweak the color just a bit. And because it's a non-porous surface and everything's permanent underneath, I can take a baby wipe if something gets out of hand and I don't really like what I see. So we're almost done here. We're tweaking a little bit more. I'm just adding color 
you can even change the color of your focal image if that's what you like to do. Now I'm using the same floating acrylic technique and here you see me shading on the outside. So I'm shading on the background here, adding another layer of shading to make my focal, Im focal image stand out a little bit more. Do you have to do both? No. Try one, try the other, try the combo like I'm doing and decide what you like best because that's really all that matters. If you like these tutorials, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. Share it with your crafty friends. That helps me grow my channel. I'm even doing some shading and highlighting on the actual owl, not just the edges. Here I'm edging the page and using the same technique. That just frames my page. Now any focal image would have fit on this. I toyed with the idea I have some magnolias that I would have gone and gone on here just in an ivory color. Um, anything a butterfly would have looked good on here so you're not limited to putting a owl on this background this background was fairly neutral with lots of options available it does have a vintage feel with the patina and the black There we go, we can see how everything came to light. Now here I decided I'm going to just brighten it a bit. I am highlighting with white on my angle brush, same technique. This is just brightening up those light spots and I think this made a really big difference. I don't always add highlights, but in this case, because the image was so dark and the background is so dark, it really was necessary. And then to give this a little bit more interest, I'm using my glossy accent on the eyes of the owl. This is making the yellow of those eyes really pop. It, it kind of magnifies them. Now the glossy accents goes on cloudy, it dries clear, but it says do not use heat tool to dry. So you gotta be patient. Here are close-ups of the finished card iCAD. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give creating a patina background a try. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, go get creative.